Dilly and the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up the sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. Right, so let's talk about potential fights for the body snatcher, Dillian White. Of course, he's my favourite heavyweight. Hey, listen, I like plenty of heavyweights, UK and abroad, but I, my bias is, of course, British first and foremost. But Dillian White, uh, for me, is my favourite fighter, and then followed by the likes of Joshua, Tyson Fury, uh, Dave Allen, and so on and so on and so on. And so on. But I do feel that um, he's, for me, is an underrated fighter. There's too many people out there who see Dylan White as well. If he steps up against Joshua, he's going to get blasted. If he steps up against Wild or Tyson Fury, he's going to get blasted, all this kind of thing. Um, but me, maybe it is my bias because I have had him on the channel um, several times. But realistically, I think that Dylan White can end the clock of any one of those named fighters. Any one of them. Put him in there against Luis Ortiz. He can clean his clock. Put him in there against Jared Miller. He can clean his clock. He can clean the clock of anybody. Um, he really can. Depends on what kind of tactics that he adopts on the night. But ultimately, if he lands that big left hook, you've seen what happens. So for me, there's too many people write off Dillian White. And they will continue to write him off. I think that Dillian White could potentially go in there against Joshua. Beat Joshua. Have a unification against Wilder. Beat Wilder. Dillian White be undisputed world heavyweight champion. And people will still say he's not that good. He's just that kind of fighter. But regardless of all that, um, listen, time will tell as to how good Dillian White is. Am I right? Am I wrong? Or am I just biased? Either one, hopefully we find out in time. Uh, but outside of the champions, who is it that Dillian White could fight potentially next or at least in 2019 because there are still some massive fights out there for him now Dillian White for me is arguably the heavyweight right now that deserves a title shot above everybody else look at the 2018 that he's had undefeated Lucas Brown say what you like he was undefeated former world champion Joseph Parker again say what you like um he's a young Former world champion, his only loss was a fight before on points. He's the first guy to go the distance with Anthony Joshua. And then he ended the saga between himself and Derek Chisora with an emphatic knockout. And he played a perfect game of patience, which shows the maturity of Dylan White, really, doesn't it? Whereas before, he'd just get in there and start brawling and, and swinging for the fences. Okay, but now he's showing real maturity of boxing skills and patience. And waiting for the opening and jumping on them like a cat. As I said, that left hook is phenomenal. Um, his uppercuts and straight rights are nothing to be sneered at either. Now, oh, also, he's got a very good chin. So, ultimately, of course, what he wants is either Deontay Wilder. That will be his uh, preferential choice. But the WBC are not biting. Um, they'd rather keep on going with the PBC fighters, such as Dominic Brazil. He should never be the WBC mandatory by defeating Eric Molina. That is a real, real drop the ball moment for the WBC. It should have been Dillian White versus Dominic Brazil for the official mandatory at least. But they just don't want Dillian White anywhere near Wilder. Wilder don't want Dillian White. And this has been proven time and time again. And I know like a lot of Wilder fans don't like to hear it. Um, in fact, boxing fans in general, I think that um, a lot of boxing fans, if they don't like hearing something, then they just point blank refuse to believe it, even though the facts are there, where Deontay Wilder avoided and turned down an $8 million offer to fight Dillian White, a so-called easy fight, right? But he turned it down and sent a private message to Dillian White saying how, how he was going to freeze him out for at least the next two years. That's the kind of um, guy that Wilder is. So he's... His preference would be Deontay Wilder, but it's just not going to happen, is it? Uh, Wilder will never, ever give Dillian White a voluntary defence. In fact, Wilder won't even fight Joshua for $28 million, right, with a guaranteed rematch. Anyway, that, that aside, that would be Dillian White's uh, favourable uh, fight to get hold of Wilder because he knows if he connects with Wilder, he's gone. It's as simple as that. And he takes that WBC title and then goes in for a undisputed fight against Joshua. So not only is this a fight between himself and Joshua that many public want to see, he was the first person to legitimately hurt 
um, Anthony Joshua um, in their first time out. Even though that uh, Dylan White had shoulder injuries going into that fight, and as you can see, when he had Joshua up against the rope, he went to throw and he kind of stumbled because the shooting pain went through his shoulder, so couldn't quite finish off Joshua. I'm not saying he would have finished him off anyway. I'm just saying that uh, it certainly didn't help. And of course, both these guys are very early into their career, and he is the guy to have actually stopped, um, sorry, to have actually beaten Anthony Joshua in the amateurs, which was Dylan White's very first fight as an amateur, and he defeated Anthony Joshua. So. Anthony Joshua fight, of course, he's a unified champion and, and he wants revenge on Anthony Joshua. But obviously a lot of people will look at the likes of, uh, but we want Joshua versus Wilder, it's undisputed, and Joshua versus Tyson Fury, it's a mega fight. Plus, of course, a lot of people putting a lot of stock into the lineal titleship. So I understand where they're coming from, but ultimately Dylan Wyatt 2019 needs a world title shot. But moving on from all that, outside of that, who is it that Dylan White could fight to not only show how good he is, keep his position very, very high. I mean, currently he's ranked number four in the world by Box Rec. He's number one by the WBC, number one in the WBO. So not only maintain all that, but of course, earn a whole crap load of money. How do you earn more money? People tuning in to actually wanting to watch it. Dylan White is building a very, very good reputation. And as I said, 2018, He's had an excellent year, he really has. Um, so potential opponents outside of them. Tyson Fury, could that be possible? It's possible in my opinion if, if Joshua versus Wilder happens. If that happens, then I can see Tyson Fury fighting Dillian White or potentially waiting for the winner of Joshua and Wilder. But ultimately, I don't think we're gonna get Joshua versus Wilder. I hope that we do, but um, I don't see it happening. So. Um, Tyson Fury is an outside chance, but it's a fight that a lot of people would tune in to watch. They really would. Uh, Dylan White has said that uh, he dropped um, Tyson Fury on a few occasions in sparring. Not quite sure when that was, but um, apparently that that's, um, is what's happened. But ultimately, it's sparring. You know, people get dropped all the time. It just is what it is. How, how do you do on the night is a question. Um, so Tyson Fury, outside chance. Another one that would be an interesting one would be Big Baby, Gerald Miller. And I think a lot of people will be interested in that one purely for the build-up, I think. But inside the ring, it's an interesting fight. Miller just keeps on coming forward, but he leaves his guard low at times and he does get tagged, but he can take a shot. That's very clear. But can he take the kind of shots that Dylan White would give? That's the thing. Um, Dillian showed in his last fight with Derek Chisora that he can fight on the back foot predominantly for the entire fight and still nick rounds. So this might be a, a huge problem for Miller, but again, Miller, he's a big 300 plus pound fighter, undefeated. He, um, he does have a draw on his record, of course, but it's an interesting fight, isn't it? Um, ultimately, I think that this fight should happen for the vacant WBA or the regular WBA World Heavyweight title um, currently owned by Manuel Char. I don't know quite what's happening. Are they going to strip Manuel Char? Are they not because of the PD test and everything? But it does seem that Eddie Hearn, he wants Jaron Miller to take on a Fraser Quendo for the title, things like that. And it's just complete garbage for me. If you're going to have Miller and White, at least put that title on the line. Because at least then it calms down Dylan White in the sense of, hey, listen, at least I've actually got a world title shot. And it is a legitimate world title shot. I know not many people look at it as, as it is, but officially it is. So Miller and White, that would be a very good option for him. Another option would be Luis Ortiz, um, which again, for me, I think that uh, Luis Ortiz, as much as it is a good fight and a very interesting one, I think that's the kind of fight that Dylan White will blast through him. Um, I think that Luis Ortiz is too far gone in his career now. Uh, potential rumours of how old he that he really is, all that kind of thing. But it's an interesting fight though, because a lot of people will pick Luis Ortiz to beat Dylan White. And that's what Dylan White wants. He wants these kind of fighters. Um, he could have fought him before. Well, I say he could have. Potentially, he did offer with a Luis Ortiz. Apparently, apparently Luis Ortiz wanted a whole um, load of money, which is why um, official offers and contracts never got exchanged. And for the fact that Eddie Hearn really wanted the Chisora rematch. But the WBC said if Dylan White fights um, Luis Ortiz, then it'll be for the secondary mandatory, which 
Danny White's argument is, why should I be fine for the secondary mandatory, which gives me a title shot in 18 months' time? Why would I want that for? I should be first mandatory. Give me Dominic Brazil. So that's why he didn't take the Luis Ortiz fight. And for the fact, Luis Ortiz, while he did say he would come to the UK, then changed his mind and was quite happy to be an undercard fighter on the Wild Fury undercard against Travis Kaufman. But that's a fight that a lot of people would definitely whet their appetite for. Uh, Dean White first, Luis Ortiz. Another one, Dominic Brazil. Again, he is the mandatory and he is next in line to take on Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder did get a gift decision, uh, a draw with Tyson Fury. He should have lost that title, but he's looking to rematch Tyson Fury. Why? Because of money and B, because he ain't going to get knocked out by Tyson Fury, is he? But that's pretty much why he wants to do that. So Dominic Brazil is permanently on the sidelines. Um, but if Wilder does fight either Joshua or Tyson Fury next and Dominic Brazil needs to stop sitting around waiting. He needs to fight Dylan White for the official mandatory position. It just settles everything. For me, that's the fight that personally I would choose above all else purely because I want Dylan White to be the official mandatory. That way Wilder can no longer avoid Dillian White, he must face him next. So that's why I want that fight. Another one will be Alexander Povetkin. Dillian White was calling out Povetkin um, a while ago. Povetkin was having none of it, um, just wasn't interested. Um, but now Povetkin's saying, you know what, I wouldn't mind fighting Dillian White. So that is a, another real good, decent fight that I would certainly be interested in. Another one, um, potentially a Kubrat Pulev, but again, much like why he didn't fight him before, because he didn't want to have to go to Bulgaria for peanut money, and it was peanut money in comparison to what he got against Joseph Parker, who Joseph Parker was ranked way higher than Kubrat Pulev, and of course, big money with Derek Chisora. Um, but Kubrat Pulev, he is the IBF mandatory, but ultimately, is that a kind of fight that will get people interested in? Probably not, to be fair, but it's a very good fight and very dangerous fight. Kubrat Pulev is very underrated. A lot of people uh, just see Pulev as a very decent jab. He's much more than that. Uh, but it's an interesting fight, but would it really be a headliner pay-per-view fight? Because Dillian White is a pay-per-view fighter now, whether you like it or not, he is. And, and for me personally, I'm very happy for him that he is. So there is the other option. Another one could be a rematch with Joseph Parker. I know Parker would love that rematch. Um, a lot of people talk about their fight and just talk about the final round, the fact that Joseph Parker nearly got him out of there. But kind of dismissed the previous 11 rounds where Dylan White dominated him and become the first person to legitimately knock down Joseph Parker. First one might be a little bit dubious, but the second one was certainly, again, that big left hook dropped Joseph Parker. So again, that might be a fight that a lot of people would be very, very interested in. Anyway, that's kind of like my thoughts on it all. Um, so outside of Wilder and Joshua, um, who is it that you would like to see? I imagine most of you guys would probably say Tyson Fury, but again, that's kind of unlikely. So anyway, drop your thoughts. Maybe Adam Kaunaki. You know what? That would be an interesting one, wouldn't it? So anyway, drop your thoughts below about it. Click the thumbs up and of course, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.